everybody. Welcome to the My Behavioral Surplus Festival. My name is Nicola Lutz. I'm one of the curators of this festival. And I'm very happy to talk today with Kei Zhang and Delia Singer about their project, Maze of Life. Hi, Kay and Delius. Hello, thanks Hi. for having us. My pleasure. You're both musicians with an instrumental background on saxophone and trumpet, actually. But both of you are in different stages of a journey into digital art as well. Would you like to talk a bit about your personal methods or approach to art creation? For me, my art uh, creation process is a lot to do with collaboration and transdisciplinary practices and experimental formats. Yeah, I'm a um, technology developer for art projects, uh, coding most of the time, digital art, uh, but also an improviser and trumpet performer. And my own personal things is usually related with sort of improvisation sessions with trumpet and, and live electronics or technology. Cool. In My Behavioral Surplus, the two of you will do a gamification project called Maze of Life. It is some sort of a labyrinth, and one could say it's an exhibition in an exhibition, which actually pervades the other part of the exhibition. Knowing that this process of integrating them both wasn't easy at all for you, I still think it's a nice image for all those mutually saturating networks and grids ongoing in the digital. When we first started speaking about creating the maze of life, I found it quite hard to imagine what you were planning to do. After a while, I got the concept a little better, but now it's already been some time since we spoke about it. That's why I'm very curious how things have evolved since then. Would you like to explain to the people out there what they have to expect approximately in the maze of life? Yes, uh, it's good that you say exhibition within an exhibition because it definitely portrays this visual aspect, but of course there's a huge sonic uh, element and, and a very interactive and immersive element for the audience to participate within the labyrinth. That sounds fantastic. The project deals with gamification. What's your own personal experience with online games? Um, so I guess I have immersive experience on online games. Um, uh, for me, in relation to this project, is to bring in that experience into this work. Um, so basically, integration of challenge, of quest, of problem solving, um, of experience, and probably most important is fun. A maze or labyrinth in itself, as an image, addresses the difficulty to find one's way through a complex structure that might be obfuscated or just confusing. But your maze aims at bringing more light into this darkness of obfuscated structures in the digital world. How does it do this? Well, through the maze, uh, there are different events and uh, happenings that occur. And uh, I guess the light through the maze is to discover these um, gatherings. And that provokes and also uh, challenges the audience to, to explore this labyrinth. Aha, uh -huh. uh -huh. yeah. yeah, very interesting. You have also mentioned that the maze's reactions are triggered by activities of the user, as well as by a collection of unconsciously provided data. This point explicitly refers to what Jojana Tsubov calls the public text and the hidden text. Of course, we don't want to reveal everything that people would discover in the game beforehand, but could you give an example of maybe a conscious action that would trigger a reaction in the system and an unconscious one as well? So for the conscious um, element would be how uh, the user would uh, basically give uh, their data away without actually questioning why and how it is being occurred like this. So uh, this is also um, something that's a, a bit of a conscious element. Or another step is navigation for the maze, where it's going to be challenging with all the questions in there. 
and um, some people can do it consciously by actually looking at it and to say, okay, what is means what? But eventually someone could also do it consciously once they learn a little bit mechanics, which is click this and do that, uh, which is going to be giving consequences eventually. Right. Um, in your concept, you have also mentioned that too many people just don't get the point of how powerful a browser is and what it could control that it could even control our mechanical world. And I have to admit, I was one of those. I was totally unaware of it before I was preparing for um, the festival. And um, so in which way is the maze of life using these aspects of the browser? Um, the browser is the, the fundamental core of communication between the, the person who is navigating the maze and receiving information. But it's also the, the door of input. So the, the phone, the web browser is going to be collecting everything what person will uh, eventually give it to a browser and give the, all the answers uh, what he has to receive. So it's a sort of gateway. It's a very powerful tool because we deliver everything for it. A media, the audio, information, text, inputs, uh, basically anything what we need is going to be based for the web browser. Would you want to give any remark or hint to those who are planning to try it out? Curiosity and uh, be open to what will be thrown at you and have fun. Yeah, have fun. Yeah. Cool. I'm personally not at all a gamer, but I'll definitely try it out and play it and have fun and get new experiences through the maze of life. And I do recommend to all our audiences to book a slot and not miss this experience. So. Thank you very much, Kay and Delius, for this interview and for taking time. Thank you so much. Thank you.